And I'm going to explain to you what's known as the central mystery of quantum mechanics. It was Richard Feynman, the American physicist, said, this is the central mystery of quantum mechanics. There's lots of weird stuff that goes on in the quantum world. Hit you with this, and it basically tells you what it's all about. It's called the two-slit experiment. I'll start with this. Imagine you have a source of light shining against a screen with two slits. Now, for the pedants in the audience, this source of light has to be monochromatic light, light of a particular wavelength, whereas, of course, a light bulb is white light, and that's made up of all the colors of the spectrum, lots of different wavelengths. But imagine this is just a single wavelength of light, and you can see the light is coming out in, 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 in waves like, like ripples in a pond. That's the nature of you know, wave-like behavior. As the light hits the screen, it squeezes through the two slits, and each slit in turn on the other side becomes almost like a new source of light, and the light spreads out, it diffracts. And as the waves of light overlap, they will interfere with each other. So where a crest hits uh, a trough, they will cancel, where a crest hits a crest, they will amplify, and so on. And so on the back screen, you end up with what's called an interference pattern. A, a, a series of light and dark fringes where the waves have either cancelled out or worked together in phase. That's fine. That's not quantum mechanics. That's a property of light that goes back over 200 years that we've known about since the early 19th century. Imagine doing the same experiment again, but doing it not with waves, but with particles. Do it with grains of sand. So this is the same experiment, but I've tipped it 90 degrees. Rather than waves that are spread out that wash up against the two slits and squeeze through, here you've got individual particles of sand. And each particle will either go through one slit or the other. And so you see they will sort of drain through and you get two bumps underneath each of the slits. So the two peaks is reminiscent of particle-like behavior, whereas the, the multiple pattern of interference is wave-like behavior. What if we do the same experiment with atoms? Well, uh, so imagine we have an atom gun, something that can fire uh, atoms, a, a stream of atoms. You can't see them because they're very small. Let's block off one of the two slits. So these two slits are, are you know, the, the, the dimensions and separation of the slits is, is, is chosen appropriately to, to show us uh, how atoms do things. And so far, so good. Nothing strange here. You'll see a lot of atoms hitting the back screen. So this will now have to be some sort of photosensitive screen where, whereby when an atom hits it, they'll, it'll give off a little flash of light to say the atom has arrived here. So the atoms are arriving as these little pinpricks of light that we see. Of course, a lot of the atoms will be blocked by the first screen. They won't go through that slit. Uh, but those that do get through to the other side, you can see there's a bit of spreading of, of, of the atoms. But if we didn't know anything about atoms, you'd say, well, that's fine, we can understand that. Um, some, a lot of the atoms are going clean through the slit. Some are sort of maybe bouncing off the edge of the slit, and so they're sort of being deflected a bit, which is why you get a bit, a bit of a spread. The first mystery of quantum mechanics comes when we open the second slit. Because now we see something that's very much like the interference pattern we got with light. Rather than having two bands of, of, of uh, spots where the atoms have gone through the two slits, it's as though the atoms have gone through the slits behaving like waves, and, 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 and you get interference of the waves and you get these bands. If we know nothing about atoms or quantum mechanics, you could try and rationalize it and say, well, you know, maybe atoms behave in a very strange way, and um, only a certain number of them are allowed to all sit together. And so, you know, me and my gang, we're all going to go on this slit. No, sorry, no room for you. You go to the next slit above. And by the way, there's this rule that no one can go in between the, the two bands, but a few naughty atoms do. So there's a bit of a, a scatter. You know, we don't... There could be some forces between atoms that make them coordinate their actions in a way to give this pattern. 
That's not mysterious. That's just, we just don't know how atoms do things. But we can be clever, and we can force the issue. What if we were to not send the atoms all through at once, but send them through one at a time? Leave enough of a gap for the atom to get through to hit the screen. Of course, as I say, some atoms will um, hit, the, uh, hit the, the, the first screen and not get through. But those that get through will hit the back screen. So let's run the experiment again slowly. And gradually you'll see, as the atoms go through, they'll be, look like they're just randomly arriving on, on the other side. You keep sending atoms through one at a time, and gradually that same pattern appears. So each atom by itself is somehow contributing its small part to the overall wave-like behavior that we see in the interference pattern. How does it do it? How, how, how does we know the atom is a tiny localized particle. We can't see it. It's too small to even see under a microscope. We're firing it at the, the, the screen with the two slits. Some moment later, you see a flash of light on the back screen. It's arrived in a localized point. It's not spread itself out. You don't get sort of like a wash of a, sort of a, a faint light across the whole screen. It's a little point. The atom is localized. It's arrived in a certain location. And yet, it somehow seems to have been aware of there being two slits, not one, because it's given rise to this interference pattern. How does one atom do that? Does it split in half? Does it become like a, a cloud that goes through both? Well, we can try and be even cleverer. What if we were to spy on the atom and see where it goes? We can just gently just observe which slit it goes through. So you put a detector just above the upper slit that will flash or beep whenever it sees an atom go through that top slit. Sure enough, you fire the atoms through one at a time. 50% of the time, the detector will beep. The other 50% of the time, it doesn't. The assumption being that the atom has gone through the lower slit. But of course, I've been cheeky here. I haven't shown you the results of the experiment. That's what you get. 50% of the time, it beeps, and you see a spot arrive adjacent to the upper slit. The other half of the time, it doesn't beep, but you see a spot arrive at the lower slit. So yeah, it's picked out the atoms that have gone through the upper slit and not the ones that have gone through. So each atom does go through one slit or the other. But that's a different result to what we had earlier. So here's the last bit of sneakiness that we can play with atoms. Surely now you know, we're, we're, we're going to get to grips with it. Leave the detector there, but just very quietly go and unplug it. <laughs> Don't let the atoms know that you're not spying on them. Make them think that you're still detecting them. So, yeah, 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 okay, we're going to run the experiment. Atoms, okay, get ready, one at a time. We're going to be checking on you. All right, so run the experiment again. <laughs> now, if you can explain this using common sense and logic, <laughs> do let me know, because there's a Nobel Prize for you. <laughs>